shocking news over the weekend. Uh, a lot of people spooked um, Silicon Valley Bank seized by uh, government, government regulators. They stepped in and uh, they promised the public that they would honor any and all deposits. Also, they stepped in with Signature. And that's really what I want to focus on today because that's, that's what we focus on, guys. We fo focus on separation of money and state. So I want to focus on Signature Bank. Of course, we're going to tell you guys the whole story. We have all the receipts like always. Signature happens to be the second biggest bank that services the Bitcoin and shitcoin industry. So I find it interesting that that happens to be, you know, the bank that they stepped in. Of course, I, I wasn't the only one that noticed. Some other predominant uh, Bitcoiners as well noticed this. Um, so could it be that just like the FTX debacle gave regulators and politicians the necessary ammunition to justify their hostility towards the Bitcoin and shitcoin industry, could it be that this was another perfect excuse, another great, uh, you know, that that fell into the Biden administration's lap to go after the industry? And of course, we're speculating here, but we do have a lot of receipts. And what we can do is we can make the case for you guys and then we'll let you guys be the judge. And, and one last thing, right, which is, again, if you're staying humble, stacking sats, earning Bitcoin, mining Bitcoin, and taking that said Bitcoin into self-custody, you are like all the memes of the Bitcoiners in the sidelines just watching while the fireworks go off. Uh, lots of rumblings about people spooked and taking their cash out of banks as, as much as humanly possible. But I, I have a question for you guys, which is if we now have the technology so that you don't have to trust someone else with the custody of your wealth, why do people continue to do so, right? If you run a business, you can make a good argument that, hey, you need that bank account. You make payroll, you know, you know pay for things, the expenses, et cetera, et cetera. Also, it's not very easy to, I know there's so many companies that are trying to fix this problem, but it's the reality is it's not very easy to get paid in Bitcoin. It is easy to get paid in Bitcoin, but the accounting side of it, right? The cat, the tax implications as well, right? So it makes it a little bit complicated where if you do run a business in the US, it makes sense to have a bank account. But let's say if you're an individual, right? You're an individual. Does it make sense to continue to outsource the storage of your future, of your wealth? And I think that this has happened for a very long time. Um, and I think that this serves as another lesson, right? Not your keys, not your Bitcoin. And I, I don't, and I, I can't even say that there's another good option to store a large amount of wealth effectively and efficiently. I don't see another one like gold, for example, right? You could take self custody of gold, but gold's very heavy. Right. And then try selling that said gold. Right. And then try transporting that. Fine. If you have a bar of gold, that's fine. But try storing a million or two million dollars worth of gold. Not to mention, what if you're trying to flee a hostile nation? Right. So anyways, what I'm trying to say is that there is no other technology on the face of the planet that makes the custody of your wealth as easy as Bitcoin. All you have to do, Adam Back tweeted it out this morning, right? 12 words is enough, right? You can literally write down 12 words, memorize them, and you can store theoretically millions, billions, trillions of dollars by doing that. Nothing else does it so efficiently. Not to mention the fact that try sending that said gold, right? Can't really do it well. So anyways, that's really the angle that we're going to take on this today. You know, I think it's been talked about so many times over and over again, the, uh, you know, the, what has happened, we, we will get into that. But uh, anyways, let me bring Opti on stage. How you doing, bro? Well, you know, in the face of everything going on, I'm actually doing pretty wonderful. So as a Bitcoiner, I think you kind of mentioned it, just watching everything on the sidelines 
And just being so happy that I'm that I am a Bitcoiner, that I do understand what's going on, at least on a rudimentary uh, level, and that all my well, all my money is in cold storage, off exchanges, you know, out of the fiat legacy system. And as a Bitcoiner, we just watch all the fireworks. And you know, I, I hate to do the like I told you so Bitcoin thing, but hey. This is where we are right now. This is what we've been beating the drum on for so long. And it seems like now here we are. So very, very interesting times to say the least. And I think we are just in the very beginning of how this is all going to play out. So it's going to be an interesting, interesting next couple of weeks to say the least. 100%. 100%. All right, everybody, let's start the show. Let's do this. Lots to talk about. The Bitcoin Numbers. Brought to you by Noddle. At this point, you should be running your own Bitcoin node. If you don't use your own Bitcoin node, you're trusting someone else's. Run your own version of Bitcoin Core, the Lightning Network, Whirlpool, and Dojo, all from the comfort of your own home. And if you're a digital nomad, you have absolutely no excuse because now you can run a Noddle through a virtual private server. Visit noddle.eu today. All right, everybody, I want to tell you about the biggest Bitcoin conference on the face of the earth. Bitcoin 2023, it's coming up. It's going to be hosted in sunny, sunny Miami Beach, Florida. You definitely don't want to miss it. May 18th through the 20th, 2023. You can use the promo code simply to get yourself a big discount on the tickets. We always go through the speaker list because they add new ones every single week. Michael Lewis, Michael Saylor, Arthur Hayes, creator of Ordinals, Casey, Alex Gladstein, Stacey Herbert, Preston Pish, Jack Maulers, Corey Clipston, Matt O'Dell, Jeff Booth, Robert Breedlove, and many, many more. You don't want to miss the biggest Bitcoin celebration on the face of the earth, Bitcoin 2023. Promo code simply. At the time of recording, the Bitcoin price is 24305 Sats per dollar, 4115 Block height, 780648 Reachable Bitcoin nodes, 16,556. Blocks to the halving, 59,352. Having estimate April 21st, 2024. Total Lightning Network capacity, 5,373 Bitcoin. Capacity value, 130 million US dollars. Realized monetary inflation, 1.76%. And the market capitalization of Bitcoin, $468 billion with a B. Anyways, um, we always talk about one of the things that we hammer in on this show is the separation of money and state, right? And one of those tools in order to do that, like effectuate this change is taking self-custody of your wealth. And, and that's really a theme that we're going to hammer in in today's show is focus on that. Focus on that because this blow up with uh, SVB, right, is if you break it down to the most fundamental and basic things, right, People continue to trust other people with the custody of their wealth. And I get it. I understand that as a business, it's difficult at this moment in time to go full Bitcoin only. I get that. But we do have a solution to this problem. It's in our hands. We do have the technology to solve this problem. But people have to take personal responsibility in order to do that. Now, governments understand that self-custody or, and this is why they're so obsessed with the hub and spoke model, right? They need those intermediaries because if there's a handful of intermediaries of which they can capture, of which they can control, they can control the money flows, which is why in Europe you have them talking about self-hosted wallets and then it became self-hosted addresses and pay attention to the wording. It's like as if it's saying that that's not the norm, right? It's self-hosted. That's not normal. I don't remember seeing that terminology in the Bitcoin white paper. And this is why I also believe that you have some members of Congress and you also have some states that are taking preemptive measures. Wyoming passed a law that would protect your private key. Missouri per, uh, passed a law that would protect the right of an individual to run their own node and also mine Bitcoin, which is absurd. Right. But why would they be passing these laws if they didn't see the writing on the wall? And this is something that Bitcoiners have been talking for, talking about for quite a while now. Anyways, here's a video of Warren Davidson and he was talking about self-custody. Let's check it out and then we'll talk about it. 
And now I'll turn to uh, my colleague, the chairman of the Housing and Insurance Subcommittee and the vice chairman of this committee, Mr. Davidson, for one minute. Uh, thank you, Chairman. The regulatory environment for the digital asset ecosystem has come to a critical inflection point. Uh, because there are no clear rules of the road for centralized digital asset trading platforms that list non-security digital assets, American users, our constituents and consumers, are not adequately protected while participating in these markets. It is our job in Congress to craft appropriate fit-for-purpose legal framework for these assets and this space. It is our job, it is our duty, it is long overdue. We must establish clear rules for trading platforms that provide Americans with the necessary protections and ensure market integrity. However, these rules must provide the clear framework that is flexible enough to accommodate innovation. These rules must also preserve Americans' ability to self-custody their digital assets. Congress must do everything in its power to ensure that American citizens can access this transformation, transformational technology and have the right to possess their stake and ownership right, private property, in the technology. Preserving self-custody is a critical step in this effort. Because of this, I am working on reintroduction of the Keep Your Coins Act to protect Americans' ability to manage their own digital assets and to make permissionless peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to diving into these critical issues with our witnesses today. Thank you. Again, I, I, I'm interested in, in, I'm interested in how he focused on the self custody aspect, um, and you know, it, it, I, it's crazy to me that we live in a world where the idea that you are not able to write down twelve words and just store a private key. And that somehow isn't allowed. Like you're not entitled to do that is absurd. It's crazy on its face. And I think that there's a lot of people that benefit from individuals not being able to do that, even in the United States, right? The owner, the private ownership of gold Right, you as an individual couldn't own a piece of metal, was not allowed for decades. So, I mean, we always talk about how Bitcoin exposes incentives. Uh, <laughs> I think that this is going to be no different. And I think this is really going to show. Well, and again, like, think about how ludicrous it is. So, I can't store my own private keys. Is a lot of people are proposing that, right? Can't store my own private keys, number one. I can't send a certain amount of money over a certain amount. I can't have over a certain amount of cash in my home without it being deemed as, okay, this person committed a crime. If they take custody of that cash, that cash has no rights. You have to prove that that, that cash wasn't being used for criminal intent. So, like... What, 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 what type of world do we live in? Like what, what, it, like what, what world is this? Can't store cash. It's automatically, you know, it's, it has suspicion. Uh, what, what is this? You know, and are we there in the movie where it's like Americans should have the ability to store their own private keys or take self custody of their wealth? Like that's crazy. Didn't we live in that world before? Like, do we really have to ask the government for this type of basic, fundamental human right? I would say it's a given right. I don't think it's something that you have to ask for. Like, is it so absurd? Anyways, uh, I think this is just another example of Bitcoin exposing incentives. Opti, what do you think? Yeah, 100%. I mean, first and foremost, uh, as Warren Davidson was basically saying, America needs to embrace Bitcoin as far as I'm concerned. And uh, it's absolutely ridiculous that 
uh, there is any attempt to outlaw self-custody, like self-custody is the way we say it every single day. Self-custody is the revolution. And, you know, I, I name I name the wallets every single day. And, and uh, uh, people kind of been giving me some heat because maybe I'm bombarding people with too many options. But just to name a few, you know, Blue Wallet, Breeze Wallet, Moon Wallet on your mobile. Uh, there's Jade, there's Cold Card, there's Seed Signer for hardware wallets or hardware signing devices or on your laptop. Just download Bitcoin Core or Spectre or Sparrow. Like this is the way, guys, you need to be taking your Bitcoin into self-custody because as far as we know, and we are literally seeing this happen in real time, the fr fractional reserve banking system is fraud. And uh, it's built on that system. And this is the status quo. And taking Bitcoin into self-custody is calling bluff on the fractional reserve system. And this is why they're fighting so hard to stop full reserve banking because it exposes the incentives of the fractional reserve banking system. So as Bitcoiners, if you have your Bitcoin in self-custody, you already know this. This is why we do what we do. This is why we go so hard every single day to try to continue to spread that message that more people don't understand how the banking system works, that more people should be opting into Bitcoin because the traditional system is designed to steal from you. It literally takes from the bottom to give to the top. It is a wealth distribution, basically cemented and backed by the institutions. And this is why we Bitcoin. This is why we go so hard in telling people to have a little bit of Bitcoin and then take it into self-custody because if you aren't doing that, then you are literally perpetuating the system that is designed to steal from you. What do we ask all the time, Nico? Why are we being forced to use a money that is designed to steal from us. Well, we have the solutions now. It is Bitcoin and it is taking Bitcoin into self-custody with a mobile wallet as easy as Blue Wallet. Like it, it doesn't have to be that complicated, guys. We have the solutions. Now it's about spreading that signal to everyone so that more people understand that, hey, we know what the problems are, but we have the solution and it is Bitcoin. Everything is rigged against you except for Bitcoin. This is the only true signal in the world right now. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Anyways, everybody, let's get to news. We have a lot to talk about. Let's do it. The Daily News. Brought to you by Blockstream Jade, built by Bitcoiners for Bitcoiners. It's an open source hardware wallet for the cold storage of Bitcoin. Blockstream Jade houses a full color camera, allowing for fully air gapped Bitcoin transactions. Scan and display QR codes directly on the device to sign transactions and verify addresses with ease. Use your Blockstream Jade with your favorite wallet software, such as the Blockstream Green, Blue Wallet, Electrum, and Sparrow. Get yourself a Blockstream Jade today and take self-custody of your Bitcoin. All right, everybody. So let's get to, you know what? Let's start with a cold opening before we have any comments. Let's do it. Before I uh, leave for California, I want to briefly speak about what's happening in Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. Today, thanks to the quick action of my administration over the past few days, Americans can have confidence that the banking system is safe. Your deposits will be there when you need them. Small businesses across the country, the deposit accounts at these banks can breathe easier knowing they'll be able to pay their workers and pay their bills. And their hardworking employees can breathe easier as well. Last week, when we learned of the problems of the banks and the impact they could have on jobs of small businesses and banking system overall, I instructed my team to act quickly to protect these interests. And they've done that. They've done that. On Friday, the government regulator in charge, the FDIC, took control of Silicon Valley Bank's assets. And over the weekend, it took control of Signature Bank's assets. Treasury Secretary Yellen and the team of banking regulators have taken action, immediate action. And here are the highlights. First, all customers who had deposits in these banks can rest assured, I want to have, rest assured they'll be protected and they'll have access to their money as of today. That includes small businesses across the country that bank there and need to make payroll, pay their bills, and stay open for business. No losses will be, and I'm, this is an important point, no losses will be borne by the taxpayers. Let me repeat that. No losses will be borne by the taxpayers. Instead, the money will come from the fees 
that banks pay into the deposit insurance fund. Because of the actions of that, because of the actions that our regulators have already taken, every American should feel confident that their deposits will be there if and when they need them. Again, to double back on the concept that I was talking about earlier, every American should have confidence that their deposits will be there. What is it that Bitcoiners always say? Don't trust, verify, right? I get it that for particular situations, specifically if you have a business, okay, I understand the necessity of having a bank account, okay? But as an individual, do you, do you, and I love Becca's comments, right? The Mandible Vibes, right? It's a great book, by the way. That's what I'm talking about. Like, it's crazy. Now, here's the part where, I'm going to I'm going to put my own spin on this cuz this has been covered tremendously, right? Which is did they use this as an excuse to continue operation choke point 2.0? That's really how I want to structure the story today. Anyways, let's check out this Yahoo Finance article to give a little bit of 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 context. Uh Silicon Valley Bank collapsed. Everything you need to know right now, morning brief goes on to say, welcome to the first true black swan event for markets since the pandemic-induced meme stock craze. Silicon Valley Bank's collapse on Friday is the second largest bank failure in the U.S. Treasury Sec Secretary Janet Yellen said early Sunday there will be no federal bailout for the stricken bank, and she held true to those words by the end of the day. A joint statement from Yellen, Fed Chair Jerome Powell, and FDIC Chair Martin Grunberg said depositors will have access to all of their money today from Silicon Valley Bank. The same goes for Signature Bank, which was closed on Sunday. No losses will be borne by the taxpayer. Any losses to the deposit insurance fund to make uninsured depositors whole will be recouped by a special, a special assessment on banks, the statement said. Shareholders in these banks will not be protected. Senior management has been removed. The Fed added it will make available additional funding to eligible depository institutions to help assure they can meet depositor needs. Wall Streeters are likely to still are likely still to brace for more contagion despite the extraordinary measures, while at the same time trying to convey messages this is not Lehman Brothers circa 2008-2009. Anyways, moving on to this awesome thread by Jack Muller, CEO and founder of Strike. And he summarizes a lot of what happened. He goes on to say, we're watching the banking system of the United States collapse on itself in real time. The Federal Reserve may have broken the U.S. banking system and tarnished its credibility. Are we entering a new era for U.S. banking? Will the, will the world now truly appreciate Satoshi and Bitcoin? And now, Jack Mullers wasn't the only one to have this type of outlook. Here is Stephen Luca, man managing director at Swan. He says, today is the end Today is the day central banks died. The governments and fiscal authorities are now firmly in control of the monetary conditions. And now think about what Joe Biden just said, right? We're taking control of these banks. We got rid of the, you know, the, the you know, the executive, uh, the executives. We're going to make us the government. We're going to make depositors whole. Anyways, goes on to say in 2008, bank portfolios were riddled with bad credit. Same problem this time? Nope. This time, bank portfolios were riddled with long-duration bonds like U.S. Treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. Wait, what? We were told those were risk-free. What's the problem? In 2020, the Fed began the great pandemic monetary expansion at the lowest interest rate in 5,000 years. Free access to unlimited money for all. The result? Huge rise in deposits and loans for banks. What did banks do with all the cash? Risk-free, long-duration bonds. Right, Jerome? Unfortunately, there are major consequences when you allow the cost of money to be zero. What exactly? Inflation. Inflation of everything you want to buy with that money. By 2022, we had record inflation numbers in the U.S. 20% annual inflation if you wanted to live in a house. Uh-oh, the Fed had a massive problem. Their unlimited money printing forced banks to take on unlimited deposits plus loans and hold long-duration bonds. But the American people had had enough. Their USD was getting destroyed by record inflation. It all started to look like Zimbabwe. 20, 20 plus percent annual inflation if I wanted a house. I thought this was America. The Fed had to fix this and fix it fast. How fast? The fastest Fed rate hike cycle ever to be exact. Unfortunately, that has consequences too. Who would have thought, quote, when interest rates go up, prices of fixed rate bonds fall. Don't take my word for it. I'm a stupid millennial Bitcoiner. Take the SEC's word for it. 
man, whoever is hiding these fixed rate bonds is screwed. Wait, who is holding a lot of these? Banks. Yes, your bank too. All banks are losing money right now. They're not losing their own money, by the way. They're losing your money. I'll dumb it down. Your bank took your money and bought these bond things because the Fed had to fix the near hyperinflation they caused. The stuff your bank bought with that money is falling fast. The Fed broke banks and the banks no longer have your money. Do you understand? By the way, this isn't just about SVB. This is about the entire U.S. banking system. Every small to mid-sized bank has this exact same issue. Now, isn't it curious that they stepped in with S SVB because it blew up, but they also stepped in to a bank that facilitated a lot of the transactions between the on and off ramps and then tie this in with Operation Choke Point 2.0. And I'll read the preface by Nick Carter that summarizes it perfectly in case you guys forgot. He goes on to say, what began as a trickle is now a flood. The U.S. government is using the banking sector to organize a sophisticated, widespread crackdown against the crypto industry, and the administration's efforts are no secret. They're expressed plainly in memos, regulatory guidance, and blog posts. However, the breadth of this plan, spanning virtually every financial regulator, as well as its highly coordinated nature, has even the most steely-eyed crypto veterans nervous that crypto businesses might end up completely unbanked, Stable coins may be stranded and unable to manage flows in and out of crypto and exchanges might be shut off from the banking system entirely. Now, isn't it convenient? Again, you can't know this for sure, for certain, but isn't it convenient that they had the perfect excuse just fell into their laps? And what, what is that thing that Christine Lagarde said, right? We must shut off the escape valves. So if the system is collapsing... You would think, right, to go after a viable alternative. Anyways, maybe I'm seeing things that are not there. Maybe because we cover this every single day, you start to make connections and patterns. But anyways, so isn't this curious? March, 18, March 13th, IMF has warned G20 that widespread crypto use would impact banks. Isn't that interesting? The IMF has warned the group of 20 nations that widespread proliferation of crypto assets could lead to bank losing deposits and curtailing lending. The IMF's report on macro financial implications of crypto assets given to the G20 in February during a media in India was made public on Monday, days after the collapse of crypto friendly banks, Signature Bank, Silicon Valley Bank and Silvergate Bank. Quote, a widespread proliferation of crypto assets come with substantial risks to the effectiveness of monetary policy, exchange rate management, and capital flow management measures, as well as to the fiscal sustain sustainability. Moreover, changes may be required to central bank reserve holdings and the global financial safety net, yielding potential instability. Finally, banks may lose deposits and have to curtail lending, the report said. The report was produced after, quote, very helpful discussions with the Indian Ministry of Finance, as well as international focus group participants. So that's a very big coincidence. The timing of this report being released. Nick Carter noticing Operation Choke Point, which is something we noticed as well, right? Elizabeth Warren, Caitlin Long's bank, uh, denied a federal banking charter. Now let's read a statement by Custodia Bank. Quote, the unfortunate demise of Silvergate, Silicon Valley Bank and Signature underscore the danger facing any fractional reserve bank when all its deemed depositors come back to claim their money at the same time and the bank does not have adequate cash. So hold on a second. Is the problem crypto and Bitcoin or is the problem fractional reserve banking? And like Jack Mahler said, a lot of these banks bought bonds under the advisement of the government itself. Anyways, the problem is not digital assets. It is that the risky business models and practices of these banks went unnoticed and unregulated until it was too late. We hope that this moment will be a wake-up call for regulators. Technology and information are moving faster, and this is enabling faster and faster bank runs. But digital assets are not going away. As with the introduction of any new technology, there's an information gap in the market. Un unscrupulous actors will take advantage where they can. 
the U.S. urgently needs to put in place safe business models for the banks that bank the fast moving industries like that proposed by Custodia so that the Federal Reserve does not need to backstop such banks. Custodia proposed to hold a dollar eight in cash for every dollar deposited by its customers. So wait, Custodia proposed a fully backed, actually more than fully backed bank, and they denied them a federal banking charter. But the blame, if you were to believe how the CNBC article phrased it, and if you were to believe how the IMF phrased it, the blame is not going at fractional reserve banking. The blame is not going at the dangerous monetary and reckless monetary policies of governments. The blame is wholly going towards the sector. No, 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 no. It's Bitcoin. It's crypto. They're to blame for all of this. Without going into the details, fractional reserve banking, without going into the details that it was the government that recommended that SVB put a lot of their deposits or put a lot of their, you know, a lot of their, I, I don't, I can't think of the word right now, into bonds. So why isn't that talked about? I think they're taking advantage of this opportunity to further isolate the Bitcoin and shitcoin industry from the U.S. financial system. And again, this isn't just me speculating this as well. You have Kraken, which is a very big shitcoin and Bitcoin exchange. And let's take a look at what some of their announcements said. Kraken USD funding will continue un uninterrupted. Our longest history and record of compliance has enabled us to maintain significant banking diversity and redundancy around the world. However, recent events should be a wake-up call. Please diversify in self-custody. We have no material exposure to stablecoin exchange rates because we do not treat them as interchangeable with national currency. Kraken operates markets for the top stablecoins, allowing traders to provide liquidity and price risk. Operation Choke Point 2.0 may have overplayed its hand this time, but the threat remains. They will continue to attack the rails, products, and companies facilitating direct crypto ownership and DeFi use. The people's money is our peaceful revolution. This is why we Bitcoin. So to me, and I understand my bias and I'm very aware of it, it seems like they took this opportunity and ran with it. And I think a lot of the woes that were caused by red government policy, by the money printing, they're trying to redirect that and push some of the blame on the Bitcoin and crypto industry. Fascinating. Fascinating. But hey, we don't say lightly in the beginning of the show that this is the separation of money and state. Of course the state would not play fair. Duh. Duh. Anyways, Opti, what's your take? And then we'll move on to the culture. You're muted, bro. Sorry. Uh, I kind of said in the beginning, you know, like Bitcoin exposes the fiat cartel. And now we fully laid out the receipts. And this is very much why the powers that be lump Bitcoin and crypto together is because Bitcoin is completely different to crypto, but they can definitely try to shut down crypto. And someone had a great comment in here in the chat, which was essentially the same thing that I was thinking. And I'll, I'm going to read it out right here. This is a uh, Richard Random K. Here's a thought. The banking establishment needs to frame crypto and Bitcoin together because if they admit they are different, then they are only a short step away from asking and discovering why. This is something I say all the time in regards to why I think it is so important to show that there's Bitcoin and there's shitcoin. It is very much the same idea we say all the time that, you know, crypto is just recreating the fiat system on the blockchain. Uh, it is no different. It is a centralized form of money just like fiat money is and so personally right now i would not want to be holding any crypto um i'd want to be holding bitcoin because you can't shut down bitcoin and this is a feature not a bug again if you are in bitcoin and your money is on an exchange right now uh you know take that bitcoin into self custody and if you haven't done that yet like do it right now download blue wallet at this at the very least and take your bitcoin into self custody take that journey today because it is becoming very evident that we are in the then they fight you stage 
And Bitcoin is the only one that will withstand this attack. They're going to do whatever they can to try to lump Bitcoin and crypto together. And we are seeing this play out in real time, um, you know, whether it is them using FTX or SVB or Silvergate or Signature as excuses to, uh, you know, lump everything together and add just ridiculous regulations on Bitcoin. We know exactly what the playbook is going to be, but hey, Bitcoin will just route around this because most of the Bitcoin's in cold storage. So as far as I'm concerned as a Bitcoiner, I'm not very worried, but I also understand that uh, this is going to be a very big PR war for all of us Bitcoiners out there. We are going to consistently have to fight the powers that be by framing Bitcoin and crypto together in the same breath. But uh, we know the difference. There's Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the only decentralized system in the world because of all you guys running nodes out there, running the software and taking your Bitcoin into self-custody. Like this is how we win. And the powers that be can try whatever they want to do. Um, but like the truth will prevail. And this isn't an inherent problem about Bitcoin. This is an inherent problem about the fiat system. This is how the system works. And Bitcoin exposes those incentives. Bitcoin exposes the fiat cartel. And so they are doing whatever they can to try to minimize the signal, the Bitcoin signal seeping out. This is, again, we talk about all the time. This is why El Salvador gets so much hate. This is why Bitcoin maxis get so much hate is because we tell you guys very simple or very simply. It is simply Bitcoin and nothing else comes close to it. So here mm. we are, you know, just seeing this play out again. I hate to do the uh, we told you so moment, but Bitcoiners have been saying this for years now, if not decades. This was going to happen. This was going to play out. And the only thing that's going to actually protect you in this moment is something outside of the system, a.k.a. Bitcoin. So, you know, Bitcoin fixes this and, and all the other memes, but it's uh it's very interesting to say the least. It, as, as much as we know we are right, even when it happens in real time and it plays out, you're still just like, wow. Uh, it, you know, on the one hand, it is a, it's a nice little pat on the back. On the other one, it's like, holy shit, how big and crazy is this actually going to get? Like, I hope people wake up quicker than later because we do not want to see this system completely collapse on itself. That would be bad for every single one of us. Yeah, a hundred percent. And we, and we got to be specific. Like we, we can't be stupid about it. We have to understand they're going to try to blame anything and everyone, but themselves, they're not going to take responsibility for it. And sure is Bitcoin and this movement, such a great excuse. It's like, no, it wasn't the money printing. It wasn't that we went from a fractionally reserved system to a no reserve system. It's not even banks aren't even required to have a fraction of the reserve anymore. Now it's zero reserve has nothing to do with that, has everything to do with the risks of Bitcoin. We can't let that happen. You have to tell people, right? Because they, they would love that's such an that's such a great cop out for them. And it's like it was, hey, guys, it was crypto and Bitcoin the entire time. And we have a fix. We have the central bank digital currencies. And that's going to make sure that this never happens again. You know, that's exactly where they're taking it. Anyways, everybody, let's get to the culture. We have a lot to talk about. The Daily Culture. Brought to you by SwanBitcoin.com. Swan is the best way to build your Bitcoin stack with automated Bitcoin savings plans and instant purchases, serving clients of any size from $10 to $10 million. We love Swan because they incentivize self-custody and dollar cost averaging. What are you waiting for? Visit SwanBitcoin.com today. All right, guys, I want to tell you about Swan's new offer. Bitcoin is generational wealth, and you can secure your bright orange future with the Swan IRA. Real Bitcoin, no taxes. Swan offers both traditional and Roth options to best fit your needs. Create your IRA and start adding Bitcoin in less than one minute. Transfers and rollovers are available. Swan's Bitcoin experts will get you set up with no transfer fees and no minimum balance requirements. This is real Bitcoin, not an ETF or other derivative. Get the real thing and get it at Swan. On. Go to swan.com IRA for more details. And if you guys have any questions, you could always send me a DM on Twitter and I'll be happy to answer them. I also, we, we were talking about self custody for a sec and I want to reemphasize the importance of self custody, but it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense if you take self custody and you put 
your backup on paper. Don't be that person that loses their generational wealth because you stored your seed on paper. Paper could catch fire. It could be eaten by a dog. No, you want to store your generational wealth on steel. And there's no better place to do it than the bit plates domino. Literally, look how thick it is, man. It's made of steel. You punch in your seed here. It's not going anywhere. It's easy to use, hard to destroy. They're designed to preserve Bitcoin backup seed words and passphrases made from highly corro uh, corrosion resistant 316 marine grade stainless steel, offering the ultimate protection against extreme temperatures. Get yours today. Bitplates promo code simply get a discount on it. Anyways, Opti, what are we talking about during the culture, my friend? All right. Well, I was wanting to do this last week, but we had a bunch of guests on and uh, it's almost fitting today. And it's this idea. I know we say it all the time. I'm a broken record and we continuously beat the drum here on Simply Bitcoin that you are still early, guys. Like, I, I think we need to emphasize this continuously over and over and over. I know we're in a 15th year of Bitcoin's life. But in the grand scheme of things, we are still completely early. And I don't want to, you know, give people all the hopium that the numbers, but I'm going to do it anyways, because I think it's very important to remember just how early we are in this whole Bitcoin experiment. And so here we go. I was going to do this last week again, but considering everything that's happened at the end of the week, it's almost going to hit a little harder. So we have this tweet right here by Dr. Jeff Ross, and he goes, good morning, only approximately $400 billion of the world's purchasing power is currently in the Bitcoin monetary and financial network. We are very, 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 very early. And, you know, I wanted to refresh this and update it considering what we've seen in the last couple of days. So as you can see here on Clark Moody's dashboard, we are currently at $464.8 billion market cap of Bitcoin. And that's not even, you know, considering all the the capital that is in all the shit coins that will eventually get into Bitcoin. But hey, that's neither here nor there. Again, remember, Nico covered this a while ago. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure this was from the ARK Invest um, press release that they did the other day. We covered it on the show, I think, two weeks ago. But shouts out to our friend Alejandro BTC. And again, we're beating that same drum. If you think you are late to Bitcoin, you might want to zoom out and look at the whole picture. And what he's talking about is the same idea. Bitcoin market cap is $400 billion. Gold's market cap is $12 trillion. Our $18 trillion. We have cars and collectibles at $6 trillion. We have equities at $115 trillion. We have real estate at $330 trillion. We have bonds at $300 trillion. That's probably maybe gone down a little bit since this all happened. We have money at $120 trillion. Oh, actually, this is Croasis BTC. Shouts out to you, bro. And so, again, the total addressable market of Bitcoin is $900 trillion. If Bitcoin just touches a fraction of... Of, of that value, that store of value, um, you know, total addressable market, then Bitcoin is still a baby at what? Where are we at right now? 24,000 or something like that, considering what's going on. We're still so early. And I, I hate saying the Bitcoin, we're still so early, but it's just, it, it's something that we need to continuously beat in people's heads because yes, I know Bitcoin has gone up ridiculous amounts of percentage over the years, over the last 15 years. It went from literally having no value to now uh, around $24,000, and it's even gone higher. But I think it is still very, very important to remember to zoom out. We are so early in this because I ask one simple question consistently to you guys. Go outside and talk to people and ask them about Bitcoin and how many people do you find in real life that are Bitcoiners, very far and few in between. We are a small, small, small minority of people out there that understand why we Bitcoin, why we hold Bitcoin and hold a, you know, an important amount of our wealth in Bitcoin. And then we had what happened over the weekend. You know, we're, we're seeing literal bank runs uh, in the first world, which is almost an idea that you'd never think of happening since, what, 100 years ago. So it is becoming very obvious that people are waking up. There's cracks in the systems. And, hey, you know, they may be able to kick the can down the road, but I think people are starting to understand that the fiat cartel is rigged against them. And, again, we have Matt O'Dell right here, and he goes, Bitcoin was designed to be ideal in this moment as trust in institutions continue to crumble. The value of trust minimized money cannot be overstated. Again, the value of trust minimized money cannot be overstated. And I just thought it was very interesting 
the same idea. I went on Wikipedia and we have the list of bank runs, guys. And just look how many bank runs we've seen throughout the history of the U.S. And I am convinced this is not the last one. Yes, we just heard that the federal government is going to bail out the banks. Well, they're not calling it a bailout, but we all know what is going on. And let's just remember what was written in the Genesis block of Bitcoin. Chancellor on brink of second bailout for banks. Like this is why Bitcoin was created, because you can't trust these people not to print more money. And again, I don't like to bring up charts on the show because I don't want to give you guys hope. And we, we try to stay away from the TA, tea leaf reading. But I think it's very interesting that as we are seeing these banks blow up, risk off or risk on assets like Bitcoin are starting to pump. And I also saw the gold pumping. But I think for our point, Seeing Bitcoin respond so strongly in the face of all this adversity, all this uncertainty, I think is back to the idea that I continuously tell you guys, we are still so early. People out there don't understand that the only way to protect your wealth going forward into the future is to hold on to Bitcoin. It's to get out of the, the traditional financial system. It's get out of the fiat cartel because it is designed to work against you. And we are here right now in 2023, 15 years into the Bitcoin experiment. It is still an experiment, whether to us it seems like it's going to be here for hundreds, if not thousands of years. It is very important to remember just how early we really are in all of this, guys. We are a small, small minority of the world's wealth. We are a small, small minority of the world's population that understands what is actually going on in the world. And again, as I said a minute ago, as much as we know we are right as Bitcoiners, it is still very interesting and exciting and also low-key terrifying that everything is playing out exactly how we are seeing it play out. Again, they will figure out ways to kick the can down the road. And as a Bitcoiner, all we really have to do is just take our wealth, take it into self-custody. Again, if I, need to, if I need to say all the wallets one more time, I will. Self-custody is the revolution, and you need to be taking your Bitcoin off exchanges, maybe getting it peer-to-peer, -peer, provide your services for Bitcoin, because you cannot trust the legacy system not to blow up again. It seems like these blow-ups are happening quicker and quicker, and they're just going to figure out whatever way they can to ensure that this goes on, which means... Inflation is going to come back heavy. They're going to turn money printer go on and everyone is going to get poorer unless you are holding on to assets that aren't going to get devalued. And we all know Bitcoin, 21 million hard cap. You can't make more of it while everything else in the world can potentially get made more of, whether it's gold, whether they mine more gold, whether it's real estate, they make more real estate. Bitcoin is the solution for the average person out there. And we are seeing in real time that people are waking up to this message, this signal. And it's just upon us as individuals to spread this signal to everyone. Remember what was in the Genesis block. Chancellor on brink of second bailout for banks. And here we are in 2023. 15 years later, still seeing this experiment play out and still seeing people not understanding what is actually going on in the world. So as a Bitcoiner, act like we have the answers. We are still early in this. Let's just continue to beat the drum, continue to make the memes, continue to spread that signal because the world needs to know right now. Yes, there is a problem. People are feeling it. And yet many people don't know that we have the solution. Anyways, Nico had to run. So we're going to just jump straight into the memes. It's your favorite portion of the show anyways. The Daily Meme Review. Brought to you by Kaboom Racks. I get this question all the time. Nico, where should I buy Bitcoin miners? The answer is Kaboom Racks. It's the best place to buy Bitcoin miners. That's where you're going to find the best deals and the best prices. Start your mining utopia today. To check out their racks, you got to go to t.me slash Kaboom Racks. Join their Telegram group and start your mining journey today. Kaboom Racks. Kaboom racks. Uh, I see. I see a lot of people in the in the comments right here. Um, 
And I I did watch I didn't I actually fell asleep halfway through watching the big short this weekend, like every other uh, fin twit Bitcoiner probably did this weekend. And I kept remembering and being reminded of the Ben Rickards scene where he's like, just don't fucking dance right now. And as much as it is an I told you so moment for us Bitcoiners, I think we also have to have a very sober and real thought right now it's like yo this is going to hurt a lot of people a lot of people are going to get wrecked and i think it's very important for us to realize hey while we may be right uh i personally don't want to see the world burn uh this is why i'm a bitcoiner this is why i continuously say that bitcoin is hope so i think it's more important than ever to at this moment have some compassion and realize leo like shit maybe this is a nothing burger um, but maybe this is just the start of something a lot bigger. And I think it's important right now to realize, hey, let's not dance on people's graves. I know I did the I told you so moment, but I think it's very important to uh, have a little bit of humility and understand that, yo, we are right. But also a lot of people are going to get wrecked and maybe maybe they can find a way to kick that can down the road. Anyways, there goes my PSA for that for that moment. But this is the meme review, your favorite portion of the show where I continuously tell you we are in an information war. And as you can tell, the powers that be uh, are working overtime to ensure that the average person gets robbed. So it's upon us as individuals to spread the message whether it's through humor, whether it is through ridicule, whether it is just through putting truth in art. Tweets are the bullets, memes are the artillery, and we are in an information war, and we will win, but it will get darker before that moment happens, and I think it's just important for us to prepare ourselves. Anyways, enough of Opti's PSAs. Let's get into this memes. This first one is by at Stack Those Sats, and again... As Bitcoiners, we love to rehash old meme templates and then update them to the current moment. Well, we have the Drake meme, uh, the hot light and bling meme where he goes, no, and we got a bank run. As you can tell, we had a bank run over the weekend and maybe it was um, maybe they wanted the bank run to happen. Hey, I don't know. It does seem like this is controlled demolition. Uh, but as a Bitcoiner, we just remember the how Finn tweet of running Bitcoin and we got how Finn running in a marathon. So I absolutely love this. Avoid the bank run and run Bitcoin. If you are not running the Bitcoin software, you should do that today. If you are not holding the keys to your own Bitcoin wallets, you should do that today. Do not trust middlemen to hold your money, avoid counterparty risks and take Bitcoin into self-custody. This is the way, boys and girls. This next one is by at ZGus. Uh, this guy's, I don't even think he's a Bitcoiner. Uh, yeah, he's, he covers crypto for mainstream. So, hey, whatever. He's, he's on the fence. Anyways, he just tweets. It says, it's a bailout. And again, using classic templates, we have the Bart Simpson meme where he's writing on the chalkboard and he just keeps going. It's not a bailout. It's not a bailout. It's not a bailout. It's not a bailout. I don't know about you guys, but uh, it does seem like it's a bailout. Very simply, it's a bailout for the rich. And uh, hey, as this meme by RDBTC goes, this is exactly what is going on. This is why we Bitcoin. Hashtag bank run. Hashtag SVB. Customers, I just want to withdraw my money. And the banks, you mean our money. This is what's going on, guys. I say it all the time. I think Bitcoiners say it all the time. And we're a broken, broken drum when we say this, but once you put your bank or your money in a bank, it is no longer your money. This is why we go hard on be your own bank. Take back your money, take back your energy and take Bitcoin into self custody. It's, it's a lot easier once you do it. And again, uh, doubling down on this, shouts out to Marty Ben. He goes, uh, the Bitcoin industry right now, and we got the classic gif of the guy <laughs> who acts like he's dying, the old guy, and then he pulls out his gun and he goes, call an ambulance, please, but not for me. And again, I know this is uh, me maybe being uh, going back on my word about us not dancing on the graves, but hey, us Bitcoiners are fine. We're taking our Bitcoin into self-custody. We understand that the world is burning around us, but we will be good on the other side because we have our Bitcoin into cold storage. The best time to take Bitcoin into self-custody was yesterday. Well, actually weeks ago. But today is better than ever. So if you haven't taken your Bitcoin into self-custody, if you still have Bitcoin on an exchange, you own a Bitcoin IOU and you need to take that Bitcoin into self-custody. Okay, this next one. Uh, shouts out to BTC Therapist or aka Nico on Twitter. And uh, again, 
I know I'm going back on my word a little bit. Uh, we have the classic meme of the aristocrats looking down from their high horses. Well, I know that the bankers are doing this to us right now, to the average person, and protecting their fa- fiat cartel. But as Bitcoiners watching the financial system implode do be feeling like this right now, it does feel like, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say that we're better. Just that we have better information and we understand what is going on in the world. And as I got this little meme by Caitlin Long, uh, waking up, the world is waking up to this classic quote that we talk about here as Bitcoiners consistently. It is well enough that people of the nation do not understand our banking and monetary system. For if they did, I believe there would be a revolution before tomorrow morning. And while I don't think we are fully there yet. I think people are waking up to the idea as we had some kind of bank runs this weekend. I I saw, I know you guys saw all the lines, the pictures of people lining up at their banks. We'll just wait until it really gets bad and people are actually all wanting to pull out their money from the banking system, the fractional reserve banking system. Uh, TLDR, you won't be able to. Anyways, this next meme is by my buddy Ropium and he goes, the memes will be way better this time. And as a millennial, uh, I really felt this one. I was having a conversation with my friend at dinner last night, and I was I, I basically said the same thing, just not in a meme form. That uh, as a millennial, every time I had a new, uh, you know, checkpoint or a new point in my life where it's like, okay, you know, maybe we're moving up. Maybe maybe there's a hope at the end of the tunnel. It seems like we get another catastrophe. It seems like we get another huge event. And this is just, (laughs) this is the world that we live in as millennials. Uh, This is kind of back to the idea of also the four turning as millennials. I think we are that hero generation where it's upon us to, you know, take it all on the chin and change the world in real time. But I really like this meme. And we got Zoomers. Wow, I am witnessing a financial crisis and millennials and Gen Xers. Uh, and this is what James Franco, I don't know what movie this is. And he's about to get, get hung on the noose and he's been hung on the noose before and never dies. And he just goes first time. Uh, we're so traumatized. We have such PTSD when it comes to what's going on in the world. It's just, Hey, it's another day in the park, another walk in the park as a millennial, as a Gen Xer, as someone that grew up with another catastrophe followed by another catastrophe it's just part of the world, man. This is this is our world, and uh, this is why we Bitcoin. This is why we continuously say there is no going back to the fiat system. It is Bitcoin or it is slavery. Okay, let me see. What do I have over here on my desk so that I can give you? Oh, here we go. I got a gray beanie. Gray beanie, very nice, comfy beanie. It's It's starting to get springtime, so... Probably won't be wearing that too much. Anyways, guys, drop your meme review score in the chat and I will cover them live. But before I do that, we want to give a shout out to our clothing sponsor, represent ltd.com or rephard.com. Use the promo code simply dash Bitcoin. We wear the merch every single day. I'm wearing the now sold out simply Bitcoin dad hat. I'm wearing the original just OG represent hoodie. Nico wears the camo hoodie every single day. He wears them everywhere. He wears them even Miami. That's how you know they are super, super comfy. So go check out representltd.com. There's still a little bit of Simply Bitcoin theme merch, but a lot of it is sold out. So get it before it's gone because those designs won't be back. We'll just have to get some new ones. Anyways, guys, hope you drop some mean reviews in the chat let's see let's see let's see a little delayed a little delayed so far but hey man it's monday we're giving you the signal and uh what a crazy time to be a big horner man it seems like we are correct and um i just hope your bitcoin's in self-custody anyways why i wait for the meme reviews unless maybe we won't get meme reviews today from you guys in the chat Check us out in the audio only form. We are on Anchor, Spotify, Apple, and we are a part of the Value for Value economy on Fountain. I will read them on Friday. I'll definitely remember this time. Uh, So if you're streaming us stats, if you're clipping us, I really appreciate it. It means a lot to us. And it, it just shows that what we're doing is providing you guys value. And we are doubling down on giving you guys as much content as possible. So 
Appreciate all the love, guys. Means the world. And uh, I guess maybe I'm delayed. I guess no meme review scores from you guys. Let me see. Let, look, I got I got a perfect, perfect response to everyone. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, hey, you already know the deal. We will be back tomorrow. We will be back with our normal show tomorrow. And... Um, yeah, man, crazy, crazy time to be a Bitcoiner, crazy time to watch what's going on in the world. But if your Bitcoin's in self-custody, just grab the popcorn, watch the fireworks, spread the Bitcoin signal to people, make the memes, make the content, spread the signal. And we appreciate everyone. We appreciate all you guys, all the viewers, all our new viewers. We really appreciate everyone showing up. But the show will go on till 2 p.m. Eastern time on Twitter Spaces. So come hang out with us on Twitter Spaces. We appreciate everyone that hangs out with us. Come add your two sets to the conversation, and we will continue to spread the signal all day, every day. And this is the mission. Get on the mission. Things are getting crazy out there, and more people need to be holding on to their Bitcoin. Anyways, guys, like, subscribe, share, not only Simply Bitcoin, but all Bitcoin content because, again, the importance of spreading the signal right now, I don't think can be understated. We have a problem in the world and Bitcoin is that solution and we have that solution. So people got to hear it. People got to know. And this is what it means to get on the mission. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. Come hang out with me on Twitter spaces. All right. Peace out, guys.